Previously on Transformers Reviews. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting edition of Transformers Reviews. And guys, today I am excited to finally bring you Sandstorm. Now, if you guys did not notice in the intro, we've actually had two other videos that have gotten uploaded within this week. I know, crazy, right? Like three videos. What is this guy doing? Well, anyway, I was trying to get those other two guys, get their proper look pushed out so that we could finally get to this guy right here. With that being said though, there is one thing that we have to take a look at here for just a second. This guy actually got originally recolored as a BotCon exclusive called Sandstorm. I wouldn't put it beyond Hasbro to repaint Scorponok as a like selects version of Sandstorm if they thought that they could make money off of that. Man, did I call it or did I call it? However, the heritage of that is still being continued on because, as we know, this is basically just a repaint of the Kingdom Scorponok. Now, granted, this is a Scorponok with upgrades, but for the most part, you can still kind of get a little bit of an idea of a comparison. But as far as just the base figure goes, I'm not going to lie, guys. I mean, if you've seen my channel, you know that orange guys are among my favorites. So it's probably not hard to see that between the two of these guys, I'm gonna have to go Sandstorm. In addition to the orange, I love how the kind of, obviously, sand color goes really well with the orange, and then you have the contrast with the purple bits. And I am just digging how that looks. Uh, it, it just gives this character that visual impact. Now, because our boy is a Predacon, you can put him with other kingdom molds that are also Preds. But because I know this guy's lore, he's not really the type of guy that would hang out with Predacons, ironically enough, despite being one himself. He's more likely to hang around with this crowd because his bio describes him as a noble Predacon. And that actually extends to the fact that in fiction, he was one of the earliest creations of Primus, whose real name was Scorpius. And he was a resistance leader on a dystopian future Cybertron that was ruled by the warlord Shockeract. Now, despite that being the case, he also was undercover as Shockeract's herald until he exposed himself in front of Shockeract as somebody that had been fighting against him this whole time, to which Shockeract promptly obliterated him. However, knowing that backstory and just seeing how awesome this guy could be in his beast mode and again to have a physical representation of that is awesome. I did want to go ahead and show him off with the original mold and this is not the re-release of Scorponok, this is the OG boy. The original mold that they used for Sandstorm. Like I said in Scorponok's video, it's a glow up from the original figure. This one has its own unique charm but again, this one just feels like it has a lot of potential. I love it as it is. Now, here we have our boy Sport in his robot mode. And the one thing that we're actually going to be addressing is probably the most prominent difference about this guy. It's because you look at his head and you're like, well, Kingdom Scorponok doesn't have that. And you look at it and you're like, the Beast War Scorponok doesn't have that. Well, technically and actually, the old guy does. Because back in the day, they had battle masks that covered their actual robot mode heads. So, as you can see here, that's how they interpreted that in the more modern day version, giving Sandstorm the, B, or the battle mask head, which, you know, honestly, again, because you've seen the pictures I've thrown up, he had Scorponox head. Now, there is a version of Scorponok that is going to have both his standard mode head and another version of the battle mask head, both of them in the package, and that is probably going to be the one that is the toy accurate redeco of the Kingdom figure, again, using this guy's colors, not this guy's, just to clarify. So, in the nitty-gritty, if we're talking about Sandstorm's accessories, 
The one thing that I do want to go ahead and mention is that I like how they reference the old figure by having one of the claws have a cyber bee and the other having the two missiles. Now, on the surface level, really, the cyber bee, yes, it is a nice callback, but it really doesn't do much. And this over here is, you know, great, and lo I love the purple paint on that, looks awesome, but just like on Scorponok stock missiles, they're empty on the back side and that kind of has a bad look. That's why I really like about the third party upgrade kit is that they are solid all the way around. So with Sandstorm and his whole height thing being similar to what Scorponok was facing, I may not be as concerned with it to be honest. Also, I did forget to mention that if you wanted to use him as the shattered glass version of Scorponok, you definitely can do that because as you can see here with Tarantulas, they both can serve as their shattered glass counterparts. Now there's actually a scene in one of the comic books for the Omega Point that shows Optimal Optimus and he's being flanked by not only Sandstorm but also the recolor of Silverbolt that was going by the name Windraiser. And so it's kind of nice to be able to sort of recreate that, especially with Silverbolt standing in, which sidebar when they start doing transmetals for the new legacy or you know whatever future lines they do, they need to address Silverbolt and give us an update because they could get a universe recolor out of it, they could get a Windraiser repaint out of it. So I mean, there's three right there and they love to have three to four molds. So anyway, just a little bit of a sidebar, but it is really kind of cool to see uh, you know, this sort of deal to homage the cover where the three of them are standing out in front of an army of Cybertronians getting ready to face off against the Shockeract. So if you can kind of see his deal, he has a Predacon tat right there on his right shoulder. However, despite being a Predacon, he, again, like I mentioned earlier, is less likely to hang out with this crew and more likely to hang out with these guys just because, again, that's not his personality. His personality doesn't match the stereotypical Predacon that we saw in the Beast Wars cartoon. So guys, I hope you enjoyed our look at Legacy Sandstorm. Again, I've been looking forward to doing this review and I know I dropped a lot of lore, which I don't normally do a ton in my videos, but this guy has such a history that I wanted to incorporate it and it is my channel, I can do that. So anyway, if you enjoyed it, I'm glad you did. Uh, if it felt a little long-winded, I apologize, but again, you know, it's just something I wanted to do. So, until next time, guys, we'll see you in another review.